Hi, welcome to the 8th episode of Understanding EEG. In this episode, we will talk about EEG localization and amplifiers. This is Imad Al-Alim, Biomed Researches, Middle East Medical Information Center and Directory, Epilepsy Awareness Program Founder and Publisher. Let us review back what are the four brain waves which we have learned earlier and we have talked about them also in details. We will just have a, a quick review. We will have uh, for the brain waves, we'll have the alpha brain wave, which is from 8 hertz to less than 13 hertz. And uh, as we can see here, this is an example of alpha brain waves, and this is one second. If we count the waves, if we count the waves between this one second, we will have a waves between 8 and 13 hertz. We have the beta waves, which is from 13 hertz to 30 hertz, and the same thing applies here if we count between this one second the waves between this and one second we'll found it either it's from 13 to 30 hertz we are having to the theta brain waves which is from 4 hertz to less than 8 hertz and we can see it also here and finally we have the delta brain wave which is less than 4 hertz and we have learned that the alpha brain brain waves can be present on the awake relaxed the beta brain waves are present and seen on the awake excited the theta brain waves are seen on the light sleep and the delta brain waves are seen on the deep sleep so now let us start our show by understanding what are the amplifiers the main the main important component of an EEG machine is the amplifier and from the name we can understand that um, an amplifier is a piece of equipment which amplifies the signal. To understand how the amplifier operates and what is the mechanism of operation of the amplifier, we will start that gradually and let us learn first what type of amplifiers we use in EEG. In EEG generally, we use a differential amplifier. Why we use a differential amplifier? Because we measure the potential difference between two electrodes. And as we can see here, I have just put for you two examples of two different types and shapes of amplifiers and we can see here that in this amplifier the two inputs are having the same polarity which is a positive charge and the same thing here the two inputs are having a negative polarity which is a negative charge the output of both of these two amplifiers you can see is a flat line so this is an example that this is not a differential amplifier because we are not measuring the potential difference between these two inputs these two inputs are similar are the same they are having the same polarity which is negative or are either like these two inputs which is having the same polarity which is a positive polarity so a differential amplifier is an amplifier which measures the potential difference between between two inputs which are having different polarities this is an example of a differential amplifier as you can see here if we take fp1 and f7 as two electrodes and on a montage of course and we are measuring the potential difference of these two electrodes we'll, we will have if we are doing this we will have a potential difference and the amplifier will show us a wave such as this one which is the potential difference of FP1 to F7 so the potential difference between two electrodes does not spy which input is exactly positive and which input is exactly negative if we take this one as an example we are measuring uh, again the potential difference between fp1 and f7 how can we know that uh, fp1 is positive or f7 is positive fp1 is negative or f7 is negative the point here is that in case of upper deflection upper word upward deflection such as this one so if we are measuring the potential difference between two electrodes such as this one and we had an upward deflection such as this one this can tell us that either input one is more negative than input two or input two is relatively more positive than input one in case we have something called downward deflection such as this one this can tell us that either input 1 is more positive than input 2 or input 2 is more is relatively more negative than input 1 it does not tell us exactly the absolute potential of input 1 and input 2 it just tells us what is the difference between these two electrodes as we can see here so an EEG amplifier 
It allows the brain waves to be recorded, often resulting in particular waveform that are characteristics to certain behaviors. You know, our brain is consisting of billions of neurons, and these neurons are carrying functions. They are generating potential difference, and we are, when we are measuring the potential difference of a specific area of the brain, we are measuring it of a group of neurons which shares the same specifications. So the amplifier takes these potential difference of neurons, it amplifies it, and it makes it in a readable waveform format to be monitored, to be studied, to be recorded. EEG signal is acquired through electrodes, as we have learned earlier, placed on the scalp according to the International 1020 Electrode Placement System. We have learned earlier that uh, uh, scientists and researchers around the world agreed to have a unique places for the electrodes during the EEG exam or EEG test, and they have called the system the 1020 Electrode International Placement System, and later on it was extended to be the 1020 Extended Electrode Placement System, or also called as 1010 Electrode Placement System. The signal, there is something we have to uh, know very well, that the signal amplitude is a few microvolts, and it really requires to be amplified several thousands of times before it can be captured. So the th signal generated or acquired during the EEG test is really a, a relatively very small signal and has really very low amplitude in microvolts. So in order to display the signal and to make it readable in a, in a shape of waveform, we need to amplify it sometimes to several thousand times. The signal is first amplified by an amplifier which measures the potential difference between two locations on the scalp. Afterwards, the signal strength is increased further by normal amplifiers and passed through a low-pass filter which minimizes distortion caused by so-called aliasing that may occur when the signal is converted to digital samples. We know that the, 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 the outlet the, the, the line outlets might cause 50 or 60 cycle interference. That's why the schematic of the amplifier itself or the design of the amplifier itself is having a low pass filter to minimize the distortion caused by the 50 and 60 cycle interference. And this is an example, as we can see here. This is an example of an EEG amplifier schematic diagram. And it's a simple one. And it was obtained from the, uh, from the internet, from the EEG open source. And we can see here not all the components of the schematic diagram of the amplifier, but as we can see, most of them. So if we talk further about the EEG amplifier, it has got a minimum of 25 electrode inputs, as some of them have 32 electrode inputs, some amplifier manufacturers now are having 40, 44, 64, 128 even electrode inputs. The input impedance should be greater than 10 mega ohms, and the common mode rejection ratio should be at least, at least 100 decibels for each input. The EEG amplifier converts the weak signals from the brain, as we have learned earlier, that the brain signals are in microvolt and it has got a very low amplitude. So what the amplifier does, it converts the weak signals from the brain into a more discernible signal from the output device. The, the amplifiers we use, as I have said earlier, are differential amplifiers, which measures the potential difference between two points, and they are useful when measuring relatively low level signals. In some designs, the amplifiers are set up of a pair of electrodes that detects the electrical signal from the body. Wires connected to the electrode transfers the signal to the first section of the amplifier, the buffer amplifier. Here, the signal is, electro uh, is electronically stabilized and amplified by a factor of 5 to 10. A differential preamplifier is next in line that filters and amplifies the signal by a factor of 10 to 100. After going through these amplifiers, the signal are multiplied by hundreds or thousands of times. And as I have said, this is the basic operation of amplifiers, and operation of amplifiers differs from one manufacturer to another, but the basic concept is almost the same. So since the brain produces different signals at different points on the skull, multiple electrodes are used as we have said earlier, and connected according to the 1020 electrode placement system. The number of channels that an EEG machine has is related to what? It is related to the number of electrodes used. So the number of channels 
any EEG machine has is related to the number of electrodes used. The more channels is the more details of the brain wave we get. For each amplifier on the EEG machine, there are two electrodes are attached, or there should be two electrodes are attached. And these two electrodes are really very essential, which is uh, the grounding electrode and reference electrode. And at the same time, I have seen some some types of uh, EEG machines which does not have reference electrodes, has got only a grounding electrode. But for me, I will just talk about the amplifiers which has got uh, a reference electrode and grounding electrode. So the amplifier is able to translate the different incoming signals and cancels ones that are identical. So the amplifier translates the different incoming signals and it cancels, it eliminates the identical ones. This means that the output from the machine is actually the difference in electrical activity picked up by the two electrodes. Therefore, the placement for each electrode is critical because the closer they are to each other, there is differences in the brain waves that will be recorded. And this is really very important because when scientists and researchers agreed to have the 1020 electrode placement system, they wanted to do this, to implement it, to minimize and to prevent uh, technicians or uh, EEG operators to connect the locations according to their understanding or according to, to a random measurement. They want it to be an exact measurement where each electrode will have a specific location because it really matters if the electrodes are not placed on their exact locations. It matters on, uh, on, the, on, the, on the outcome. It matters on the impedance itself because we have a three shoulder while recording the EEG and the standard is 5 kilo ohms I mean sometimes they can tell you that okay it can go up to 10 kilo ohms but if it's up this value up this threshold then the uh, recording we, we are acquiring is not to be real good it's not expected to reflect the real activity of the brain itself so one of the important factors while recording the EEG is to have the electrodes connected to their exact locations according to the 1020 International Electrode Placement System. So hopefully by now we have uh, taken a short idea, a short introduction about uh, EEG amplifiers. We will not go in further details about amplifiers because we are not considering the electronic wise here we are not considering the electronic point of view here we want to know what is the amplifier why we use the amplifier what is the main function of the amplifier what are the number of electrodes we use in the amplifier and hopefully we have seen this and uh, hopefully we will concentrate more on the site which is more reflecting to the EEG recording and to the EEG exams. We'll see you on the next episode. I do thank you very much for being a good listener. If you have a correction, comments and feedbacks, you may kindly contact us at the email address shown here. And you are most welcome to visit our epilepsy awareness program as well as our main website biomedresearches.com this is Imad Al-Alam and I wish to see you soon on the next episode thank you very much and stay tuned